Hello and welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarpin, PhD in Accounting. And our topic today is forecasting techniques. Double exponential is moving. By the way, we have a, a playlist only with forecasting techniques video. We have a lot of videos over there. So a statistical forecasting model, we usually use time series. So only the variable that we want to forecast. Revenue, production, etc. And then, usually time series has components such as random, trends, seasonal effects, cyclical effects. The double exponential smoothing works with stationary time series and a trend. So stationary component and trend components. Another method is moving average model. We have a video about that on our playlist. Please check over there. And the Double exponential smoothing is based on a linear equation, A plus B, K, where K is the number of periods into the future uh, that we want to forecast. Usually, we go on one. So that is the uh, most used and most accurate because this is a, uh, a method for short-term decisions. If we go more than one, our Accuracy goes lower. How do we find A's and B's? So A is alpha that we will determine times the, uh, the, the forecast plus one minus alpha multiplied by the previous A plus previous B. So we need to uh, work with the previous number. So the initial number is a little bit odd here. And the B is better that we also will estimate. Multiply by the A, so we need to find A first, minus the preview A, plus one minus beta uh, times the previous B. And then uh, the forecast is we combine A and B. But here, Stay plus K. So we do it for, for instance, year 10. And then when we want to forecast the year 11, we combine the A's and B's of year 10. So we combine the previous A's and B's. Okay. So let's go to our Excel file. So let's assume this uh, double exponential smoothing. Let's assume beta uh, alpha 0 0.4 and beta 0 0.8. We can assume any number, and they are not bad. Here, well, our double exponential is moving. Not that bad. So, okay, how do we do that? The first one, we have no previous data, so level is the last known number, and trend is the difference between here, 2001 and 2000. And by the way, these are revenues of an actual company. So, uh, but let's name it company X. And then from the second year, we can start the formula. So remember, we forecast combining A's and B's from the previous year. So A and B here. So we don't forecast the second year as well. So we start forecasting the third period. That is why we cannot have only three numbers or four numbers or whatever. So we need some numbers here. So here, 22 years of revenue or one year of monthly revenue and so on, or more than one year is better to find it. Uh, they trained more on a more accurate way. So here, how do we do our formula. So here we have alpha times the actual revenue. Remember, we are using this leverage this trend of 2001 to forecast 2002. So we grab the 2001 numbers. So alpha times 2001, the actual number, plus one minus alpha times uh, the sum of, our, of previous A and previous B. So that is our 
level. And we can copy and paste this formula until the very end. What about, and then it goes in line with this formula here, a plus, a times our uh, actual uh, number plus one minus alpha multiplied by the, the sum of alpha and beta. That is the forecasted number. If we go to the forecast model here, and the trend, what is the trend? So it is beta times the difference between the two levels, the actual and the previous level, plus one minus beta times the previous trend. And it goes in line with our, our formula here. So that is what we what we have. And then we combine the forecast here. And then that is what we have for all of our numbers. And then our absolute percentage error. And oops, not mad, it's MAP. So our mean 6.99. Are these two numbers good? Apparently they are not bad. 6.99, 7%. So we can go here 0 0.5 and 0 0.4. 724 goes, uh, goes worse. So we can try different numbers or we can work on a best way. We go on solver. And then let's reset here. So what do we want here? We want this error to be minimized. By changing what cells? By changing these two cells here. Keep the non-linear. The other ones will probably give an error. So here, keep it and solve it. Whoa, alpha 1.4, beta, the range is not that huge. 0 0.14. See, it's better only here that the Total revenue declined, but it was the forecast was to go up. Remember, what do we have in 2020? COVID. So that explains a lot, but then it goes down and then up again. And then, okay, the model was good to capture these uh, small changes. And now the MAPE is 481. What is the best one? These one are the single method. So if we go to the single, it's also the mate here. Sorry. Uh, okay, let's go a alpha here, 0. 0.5. We have this one, total revenue forecast, not that good, but let's go on the solver. And then we have the same. So let's reset here. So we want to minimize the error by changing this cell Better, 499, the MAPE, double 481. So usually the double is better than the single because it's double, because we consider also the trend. And here to forecast, only to combine both. To forecast the 2024, if we want it, it is trend plus level times two. So it would go to, whoops, uh, it would go to 290, so, or, yes, oops, sorry. So it is this one plus this one times two. Now makes sense. Then it goes to 151. And here, what we are assuming, that for the next periods, what changes is only the trend. So, okay, we go and we are adding the trend. Or we can also do this formula by doing this one, 47 plus trend. Then it would be the same 151. So we can keep here and then let's go to the 2024. And then it will be just like your 
XO5. So we can forecast more than one period. But the issue here, we have no seasonality. And then to add seasonality, we need to move to other techniques like hot winters or regression analysis and so on. Okay, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have questions or comments, just leave them here or email me. Have a very nice day and God bless you.